Windsor and you're finally here. I'm so excited. Oh my goodness, but I really hope you dressed warmly. Oh, we are in a very cold place, intern, and we are actually at a wonder, a wonder of nature, a wonder of modern science and nature, and it is freezing cold, and I'm really missing the warmer climates that we're normally in right now, but we have been given a very, very special assignment. For some reason, this is a new area. The scientists are dubbing it the Polar Vortex Zone. It's really weird. It's just exceptionally cold, and yet something very interesting has showed up here, in turn. Something very, very interesting indeed. If this happens, like if we can make this work, this might bring back some very special species, really boost them up. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's so cold. It's so cold. It's so cold. It's so cold. You can hear the snow falling. Oh my gosh. Oh, but something weird is going on here, intern. It's been cordoned off. You can see the fencing they've put up around it, and they're hoping they can just uh, see what sort of interesting things happen at this wonder of modern nature discovery. Hmm. Hmm. No guests are allowed at the moment whatsoever. It's just us researchers. In fact, it's just you and me. We don't even have the park rangers here yet. Whew. But let's go ahead, go in, and welcome, in turn, to the polar vortex. So that's what this little island spot is currently known as. It is full of freezing cold snow. You can see the glaciers in the distance. Oh my gosh, that's really beautiful though. Look at those glaciers. They're just scattered around. Lots and lots of these trees, but we're here for a very special reason. Are you ready to go meet them? Are you ready? There's actually a few of them. So let's see if we can find them. Oh, that cold snow. Let's see if we can find them as we work our way through the forest. But we're not actually here for the forest. We're here for these little patches. Oh, gotta wiggle through these trees. Oh, wow, it's so beautiful, even though it's kind of barren. Oh, and look, there's flowers. Oh, bouncing around in the rocks. These snowshoes are kind of heavy. Oh, look at them. They're so beautiful, Larkspur. Oh, I love Larkspur. They're so lovely. Wow, and look at this glacier. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so cold here, though. Oh, my goodness. Oh my gosh, what's this? <gasps> a little bit of arctic moss! Ooh, and here is what we are here for, intern. Ooh, these waterways. These waterways are, are exceptionally, well, watery. Hmm. <gasps> Look, we're getting GPS notifications already! Good, 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 good! That hints at what we're here for, intern. Hang on, let's see if we can... <gasps> intern, intern, get out the binoculars! And look at that! It's a penguin colony! And not just any penguin colony, these are emperor penguins! Do you know how much it is baffling? Baffling! All of the scientists and biologists to find emperor penguins flapping around over here? Whoop! Oh wow, but we're, that's actually what we're here for, oh my goodness! We might have to install some cleaners. This is an interesting underwater waterway into this weird little island center and for some reason this place is just so freezing cold and oh my gosh look at all the little penguins they're so cute look at them swim around <gasps> look at that handsomeness but in turn these are emperor penguins normally these guys are only <gasps> look 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 and that's definitely a puffin i'm pretty sure no that's a rock hopper penguin that is for sure a rock hopper penguin right there there are, for some reason, a couple penguin species and some rock hopper penguins that are jumping around, and we don't know what they're doing here, but we're going to do our best to monitor them, research them. This is just a weird place. Like I said, it's known as the Arctic Circle. It's in the center of an island that is connected. This is actually seawater. I know it looks like fresh water. Ah, I'm going to get so wet and cold. Make sure you wear your cold water swimming gear while we're here, intern. We don't want to risk anything. Look how pretty the water is, lapping up against the edge, though. Oh my gosh, we definitely need to install some water purifiers, though, if we're going to help out this colony. That's our job. We are here to monitor the colony, make sure everything uh, stays nice. Hmm, look at all of them. Look at them huddled together. Oh my gosh, let's go check out those penguins. Ooh, look at this. So much snow. <gasps> look at all of them. So, Oh my gosh, they're so cute. But we cannot figure out how the heck these penguins even got here. We have no idea what on earth has attracted these guys to this little island or why they're together like this. 
Oh my goodness, look at all of them. So we're going to be in charge of monitoring and researching these emperor penguins. You can see how they're doing their huddle together, stay warm activity. They really are especially adapted to be around very cold water and very cold, like, climate. And which is very interesting because their average body temperature is around 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, is that right? Oh my gosh, I love these guys. Oh my gosh. This is going to be amazing. Look at them. Look at them. But yeah, normally these guys are in the Antarctic, like Antarctica. And so it's really confusing about what the heck they're doing here. What are they doing? This is fascinating behavior. But this is a small little, a small little colony. And really the researchers just kind of want to see what they do. If they decide to start adapting to slightly more northern like locations, then that could really bode pretty well for them since the Antarctic is really shrinking right now due to global warming. So we're keeping an eye on these little guys. Ooh. Oh, oh, there's a caribou? Let's check that out. Why hello, handsome man. And apparently there's a caribou on the island. So let's see if we can help him out because he doesn't seem too happy. And then we'll do some more research. This, like I was saying, intern, this waterway, in fact, hang on, Mr. Caribou, we're going to help you out. I don't think you should be here. This is supposed to be a penguin, a penguin only zone. But, you know, I don't think it'll be bad if you're walking around helping to tend to things. All right, let's give him a little shelter to hide under if he wants to. And then let's set him up with a little bit of vitamin water. That's usually what the wild animals need now and then, especially in enclosed parks like this. So there you go, Mr. Caribou. I hope those things help you, uh, if you wish. There you go, there you go. Unable to reach it? Okay, that's okay. What about over here? Is that better? Oh, he likes that salt lick. He smells that salt. I wonder what you're doing here, but you're very handsome. Oh my gosh, you're very handsome. Especially walking through this area. <gasps> Intern, this is beautiful. What a glorious creature. Oh my gosh. And can you hear them? Can you hear them? Oh, but this water actually opens up to the ocean itself. And so that's what's so fascinating about this area is that there's some sort of underground tunnel somewhere. And so people on the island are used to seeing some marine animals pop in, but they called up researchers when they recognized penguins. They've had some puffins pop by. There's lots of varieties of puffin that tend to live uh, kind of along the more northern stretch of South Africa and South America, or uh, northern, what the heck am I saying? Southern stretch, southern, sorry intern, I'm so excited, it's hard to focus. <gasps> look at this, look at this little guy. Look at this little guy, okay. Oh my goodness, oh, it's so cold. It's a rock hopper penguin. Oh my gosh, he's so freaking cute. He's so cute. It looks like we definitely need to put some monitors on the water though. I want to make sure that we have some monitoring of this water so that the, the penguins are going to be okay. So let's definitely pop over and we'll filter the water to get some good monitoring of what it is doing. So let's see, I wish I could hide this thing better. We don't want to startle the penguins after all. Alright, there we go. We'll put down a whole bunch. Yeah, a whole bunch. <laughs> And then let's see if we can maybe hide it under like a rock facade for now. Yeah, there we go. So we're gonna hide this thing. And the penguins are complaining about being hungry, huh? Let's see. Well, if you go in the water, my friends, yeah, they just couldn't figure out that there are fish in the water. And there are fish in the water, but if they're complaining about being hungry, the only reason we've been authorized to turn this land into a, a refuge for them is on the understanding that this will be a chance for them to flourish, to really try to rise up and fight the decline in the Antarctic and give penguins a new boost for the world. So I'm pretty excited. We actually have a very noble goal of seeing anywhere from 200 to 500, depending on how quickly they breed, of the emperor penguins specifically in this park. So that's, that's one of our big goals. All right, I hope you have your cold wetsuit on because it's going to be freezing in here. Ooh. Look at this. It's very barren, but you can see there's a few fish, a lot of clams. We might need to encourage some underwater plants to grow. Oh my gosh. Look at that. 
Isn't that beautiful? Oh, intern. How could we turn down an opportunity to work with these guys? But you can see there's a little, a few reefs. The fish probably won't be able to survive with all of these new penguins in the area. Chewing them up. Ah, oh, good. Look, it's a poop sample. We'll have to analyze that later. Oh my gosh. I had no idea it would be so beautiful here. I really didn't. All right, let's check on these penguins. The other, the other researchers have already tagged most of them. Come on, my friend. We've got to see if they recognize that there's fish in the deeper waters. What about you? Yeah, now he's chasing some herring. Yeah, the southern rockhopper penguin seems just fine. As far as shelters go, they sleep over on the rocks over uh, in the water. You can see, by the way, intern, if you look at the water... Oh, another, another sample! All right, we've got to collect that. Oh, we're going to have to build a staff lounge for sure. We're going to need somewhere to warm up. Oh, more samples, good. Collect any of the poop samples you can find, intern, because those are going to be essential to helping us. Analyze the health of the animals. I know it's not the most glorious part of the job, but it's totally wonderful. Look at those little guys walk over there. To see all of the animals so healthy, it's totally wonderful. Oh, look at the beautiful little shrubs really pushing, trying to grow here. Oh, this is going to be great. So yes, our main job is to keep an eye on these penguins and to try to really help booster the health of this natural preserve. So what we might start doing is putting down a bunch more reef rocks for the fish to hide in. Because those ones aren't the best and they are probably going to get all chewed up if the penguins have their way. Because the penguins are new to this area. But it is open underground somewhere and it connects... And they occasionally see like dolphins and things like that come in here. So we're going to have to see if we ever see any other interesting aquatic animals show up. So let's see. Aha! Let's see how you're doing. Oh wow, the emperor penguins have moved all the way over to this part of the park. In fact, I should probably show you. Oh, look at this! There's a bunch of fish! And it's a puffin! That is, in fact, a puffin, and we're standing in more bird poop. Okay, we got this. We got this. But this is a puffin, and they're actually used to seeing puffins uh, fly around here. But it looks like there's a whole bunch of fish dead up here, so I wonder if they just get swept by the current up onto this little shelf. Hmm. That seems to be good for the puffins and the penguins, though. Everyone seems very attracted to this spot. I wonder if the fish spawning over here... Look at everybody. You can see how the fish are attracting a whole bunch of the different animals. Oh, look at the puffins go! Oh my gosh, that was beautiful! And look at the penguins go! Oh, there's so many! There's so many birds everywhere! And the penguins are so beautiful to watch swim! Look at the little rockhopper penguin! Oh my goodness! You guys, like, they're not uncommon here, but the emperor penguins definitely, definitely are. Oh, there's fish everywhere. It must be like a big fish spawning rush or something. I wonder if that is what is making it so that all the penguins are showing up in this area. Woo, but let's climb out intern and I'm going to show you the basics of the park. Remember, one of our main goals is monitoring the health of the penguins and just seeing if they're going to be able to be successful enough to breed. The group really wants to see, like I said, anywhere from two to 500 born. Interesting. Are you having some trouble over here, my little friend? Rock hopper, rock hopper, puffin. So let's make sure that you know the difference, intern. This is a puffin right here. This little guy. You can see he's more built for actually flying and also apparently being very confused by small slopes. And it looks like this rock hopper penguin, he is much smaller than the other penguins, as you can see. Let's get a good look at him. Is that so? But this is the rock hopper penguin. You can see his distinctive eyebrows, those long feathers over the back of his eyes. His big beak, and you can also see... Oh, he's so cute. You can also see... Let's see, there we go. I wanted to get a good picture of him. That he's a lot smaller, a lot shorter than the emperor penguins. See, there goes an emperor penguin right there. Those guys are pretty tall, too. All right, now let's see if this little dude... Are you having some trouble figuring out a preening walk? There you go. <laughs> yeah, he, he had some trouble figuring that out. So he should be okay now. Oh, check this out, intern. This is the other thing that the polar vortex is known for. Beautiful geode mineral deposits. 
Oh wow, Emperor Penguin 13 is pregnant already. <gasps> That's wonderful for our Penguin Reserve. Oh, that'll be great if we can, oh, look, good poop samples. Collect them in turn. We can analyze them to learn more about the amazing penguins. In fact, I'm probably gonna have to hire a couple, a couple park rangers specifically to help me out. We'll get some biologists on the team this time. Ah, snow, cold, cold. So many random bursts of snow here, but check this out. Wow, so many emperor penguins and rock hoppers are pregnant now. Yes, yes. This will be great to see whether or not this can happen. So this is what the island is also famous for, these geode mineral deposits. They're very beautiful. And I'll show you around so you've got a good idea of how big this area is. It's huge. Oh, see these tunnels, these crystal tunnels are another, oh my gosh, it's so cool in here. Wow, look at them sparkle. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh my goodness. But these beautiful crystal tunnels are another thing that this island is really well known for, especially the geodes. The entrance is right over there. Oh, looks like there's a puffin wandering by. Then we've got a secondary little lake right over here. Oh, Emperor Penguin 5 is now pregnant. We might have our 500 penguins in no time. Oh, that would totally rewrite the books. There aren't that many around anymore. Ah, eh. I have to get through these cedars. Oh my gosh, look, there's some over here. Wow, they're really spreading around this island. Normally they stick in uh, much tighter groups, though the females and uh, when the males, when it's their turn, will really travel far distances in order to get enough food. So maybe everyone's just scouting out where the best fish are. We really better make sure the fish populations can take these hits, though. The fish populations are very important. I know the penguins are very flashy and cool. Oh, it's so cold. I can hear the snow falling everywhere. Ah, there's more snowflakes in my face. But the fish are what make up the health of this island, and I don't think the people who live here would be very happy if all of their food disappeared. Ah, and here's the other beautiful crystal tunnel. This is the second lovely crystal tunnel that you can find here. And you can go through it. Oh, just look at the changing colors. Isn't this beautiful? I love it, I love it. So these crystal tunnels are also what this part of the island is famous for. That's why it's actually closed off in the first place to help protect these so that people don't come over and start wrecking it. Oh my goodness, look, it's a penguin. It's a penguin. Look at all of them. Oh my gosh. They're pretty docile too. They don't seem to care that we're getting right up and staring at them. What you doing? What you doing? Oh, now these puffins, this is interesting. There's plenty of food, pretty sure. Yep. So far the fish populations haven't taken too big of a hit, so we should be okay here. But yeah, so in turn, as you can see, there's a bunch of ice flows. There's just some large floating rock faces that you can find all over the waterway here. Somewhere around here it's opened up. So like I said, it's very common to see just random marine animals wander in, stick around for a while, and then swim back out to sea. And you can see where uh, it's kind of got an okay reef face. We might want to help out the reef face a little bit more, add lots more rocks for the fish to hide in, see if we can encourage any of the cold water, underwater plants to grow, just to give the fish something to eat too. I have a feeling that they would uh, probably school elsewhere. I wonder why they're schooling here. It just must be spawning time for them. Oh my goodness, interesting. So we're going to have to keep an eye on these guys. It seems like some of them get lost in the area. And if one of these penguin species just can't be successful here, it's our responsibility to report that to the main biology council so that they can decide what they want to do about this. Hmm. But as you can see, it's a very amazing, amazing place. It's huge. It's got lots of area for them to wander around. I can't believe a caribou slipped in here. Oh, hey, there he is. All right, let's take a peek at the caribou. He seems to be pretty happy, doing good. Just mining his own beeswax. <laughs> He's got a penguin buddy with him. Maybe he just wants some penguin buddies. Yeah, just wanted some penguin buddies. Oh, look at the snow, so cold, so cold. Yep, they're just, they're just hanging out together. <gasps> and the emperor penguin is gonna lay an egg. All right, let's keep an eye on her. That'll be our first thing that we really do today. 
I don't know if these puffins are going to make it here. They really seem to have a hard time finding the abundance of food. Meanwhile, she's being very sneaky about hiding this egg. So let's back up a little bit so we don't alarm her. And we're going to see where the very first emperor penguin lays her egg. I wonder if she's actually stuck behind the trees. Let's check that out. I think she was stuck behind the trees is the answer. <laughs> All right. No? Maybe so? Just wandering in circles? Maybe she doesn't know where she wants to lay her egg. Nope, you want to lay your egg behind those trees? I'm sorry, I'll stop moving them then. There you go. Alright, she's going to be the first emperor penguin to lay any eggs. We're going to have to see when the chicks show up if like hawks and other things do too though. It's not like the emperor penguins, even though they live in the Antarctic, are completely free of predators. I don't know if she knows where she wants to lay this egg. Do you- let's, let's, come here lady. Come here. Do you need to think about it? Nope, maybe she just knew- is she waiting for her mate, I wonder? Interesting. Emperor Penguin 8 is gonna go lay their egg. Let's see if this one lays her egg first. Nope, she's gonna go investigate her fish. Oh wait, did she already lay her egg? Hmm. Hmm. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Let's check on this puffin. It's totally lost. I don't know if these puffins are gonna be able to make it. They just get completely lost. Six is pregnant. Eight is eight laid her egg. Fourteen is still trying to find where she wants to lay her egg. Oh, there's some caribou poop. We might as well research that. Puffin has laid their egg. Ha! It's just really hard to see the eggs here. Oh, look at all the poop. Okay, collect it, intern. Collect it. Yeah, I can't see it, but it's here somewhere. She's probably sitting on it. Hmm. All right, we'll keep an eye out on everything. Interesting. I wonder if there's some sort of egg disease among the penguins. Oh no, we'll have to keep an eye out for that too. Until then, the puffins are very, uh, very confused by life. So we might have to help them out in a few places, but so it begins in turn, so it begins. Time to watch our penguin colony grow.